Welcome in, bienvenue. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Effing with the Ineffable. I am Zoe. I'm Smokey Pigleton. And you might notice that this, my setup looks a little different today. We are recording at night, which we never do. We always record same day, same time. But this week is Holy Week. Happy Holy Week, everyone. Although by the time you see this, it's going to be um, Easter Monday. Happy Passover and all that stuff. Yeah. So, um, yeah, uh, Holy Week is a really, really busy time. Um, so we decided to record a little early and a little weirdly this week. We're kind of just talking about whatever comes to mind because, um, yeah, we just don't have a, a lot of, um, time later in the week to record so uh we only talked recently but has anything been going on of note not really it's been raining a lot here we got flooding i went up to a uh visited property um and uh saw a place that was uh kind of uh it's on the edge of a national forest so that it's that's got that's that's what it's got going for it. Everything else it has going against it. Mm. <laughs> well, the good thing is you're, it's not like you have an urgent need for a property. So it's not like you have to settle. For That's, it. That is true. That's true. So you can wait until something better comes along, you know? I could, yeah. I'll probably go up and see the place. It's actually got a house on it, but they oh. say that. The house is so ragged that it's actually considered of no value. Uh, so. It's a detraction oh, from the. No, I hesitate to hesitate to walk inside and see what kind of yeah exactly horror, horror show that might be. <laughs> um, have you been seeing clients lately, or is yeah. that? Yeah, we've been seeing them. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah, what well, the guy I saw today said. <sighs> the people in here—they're just no good. Most, he was of our, resident, most, of would just, most of them would just be a waste of a bullet. You ought to just use a knife on them. Wow. This is an inmate? Compassion. Compassion, compassion for your fellow man. Yeah. Charity in action right there. <laughs> yeah, it's an inmate. Yeah, it's an inmate. No, it's it's my supervisor. <laughs> I thought you were. I didn't know if you were like having a conversation. Worker. I didn't know if you were having a conversation with a coworker or if this was a, uh, if this was an inmate. But I, no, I would hope that somebody who would make a comment like that would be an inmate. But I don't know. It kind of fits with the <laughs> context. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's good that you've been seeing people. We uh, the only real big news that happened to us was my youngest daughter turned two. So that was exciting. We had a little, we didn't really do much like on her actual birthday because my family's coming to visit next week. So we're going to have like a bigger celebration then. Um, but we had a Zoom call and she opened some gifts and got so, some books and some beading. Which she's playing with right now. She loves those beads. Good. It's a it's yeah, it's like just a lacing bead thing. It's a perfect it's a perfect O C D thing for yeah. kids. They, they can sort out the colors and the shapes and yeah. She doesn't care so much about that. Her older sister would do more of that. She just likes the like I don't know. She just likes dumping them out of the jar and picking them up and dumping them out again. So I don't know. Um, she does like her new books though. She's get she like twice in the last week. This is such a, like a happy parenting moment. Twice in the last week, out of the blue, she said, "Reading is fun," which yeah. is funny because she doesn't say a lot of like full sentences like that. But twice she said that full sentence. I was like. I'm glad you think reading is fun. I think part of it is her older sister reads almost nonstop. So she thinks reading is the cool thing to do, I guess. Yeah. So. Actually, her older sister can sight read some words, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and like spells out words. Like she, she likes to try to, 
she'll think of words that she wants to write out and try to um try to sound them out she like we don't do a lot of like formal reading instruction but um she's kind of just figured it out on her own even though she's it's weird because when i was in like what was i maybe first or second grade i remember i got moved into the advanced reading group because i was the only one in the whole class who could figure out the word geraldine and i happen to have an aunt geraldine yeah, yeah. that's so funny that's so random <laughs> geraldine that was when we lived in chattanooga tennessee wow yeah that's that's funny but how long how many years of school did you do in chattanooga just a ooh, maybe a couple what did i get up to because didn't you go to kindergarten in fifth grade yeah okay. i went to kindergarten in um staten in island new york. new york city yeah yeah so yeah anyway yeah should we get to our topic sure you take the lead on this one because you sent me an article and I skimmed it, but I did not. I thought this might be a good follow up. I know we had a show where we talked about gun laws and yeah. all that stuff. And we went into quite a bit of depth about that. Yeah. Um, but now they're talking about, uh, they always do this and it's, you know, a classic governmental ploy have have a crisis overreact take power that yeah. they wanted they wanted to take power so they use this as an excuse to take the power yeah right you know what they so, say never let a good crisis go to waste that's right you you want to make hay while that uh, while the while the barn burns i guess <laughs> exactly <laughs> i don't know what they're doing but anyway so they They've, uh, they've decided that there, because there was this uh, shooting in Atlanta where this, this sex addict or whatever decided he was going to kill a bunch of uh, sex workers and other people. And he was, you know, he obviously lost it. And then yeah. there was this other guy in Colorado who lost it. Uh, I, don't, I don't know anything about that. Like, I heard, basically, all I know about the first shooting was what you just said. The second one, I don't really know anything about it. I know that there was a shooting in Colorado, and that's it. So, I don't know. And he's the apparently a Muslim, and he had been, I don't, uh, he had been talking violently recently or whatever. And anyway, he apparently got a gun. Um, and again, who knows whether he even got it through legal means, but he went into a, a grocery store and killed a bunch of people. Just sounds like randomly. It, it doesn't sound like there was any um, any basis for going in and targeting these people. Yeah. So, Mental illness. Yeah. So they use that and they say, you know, oh, guns kill people. It's like, yeah, that's true. Guns and guns in the hands of killers killed yeah. people so yeah. do knives and hammers and so do just plain fists yeah 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 uh, you know uh or feet or blunt instruments or arrows or whatever you want to use i mean killers killers gonna kill yeah people uh, people kill people guns don't kill people people kill people yeah but guns in the hands of, of uh, killers does help to facilitate killing. Sure, it's an effective uh, guns, means of doing that. And guns, in, guns in the hands of defenders facilitates defending. Yeah. Um, so, you know, some people would say, oh, we need more, uh, we need fewer guns in everybody's hands, and then there would be fewer guns in the hands of people who kill. Um, so far, that hasn't worked out real well in, like, Chicago, New York, California, uh, the places where there is strong gun controls already in place, uh, but there is a massive number of murders that still go on, primarily with handguns. Uh, now, they don't want to ban handguns. They're not saying they want to ban handguns. They want to ban AR, uh, Armalite-style rifles, AR-15s, 
that are semi-automatic and tend to have larger magazines. They don't want you to be able to have a magazine where you can feed more than 10 bullets into the gun at any time without having to change out the magazine. Um, guess what percentage of shootings were actually done with that? Like in the last year or something or? Like it, yeah, like almost ever. I'm gonna no, guess like hardly zero. Any, yeah, hardly any, hardly any. Yeah, uh, so, uh, so I was looking at this, I was looking at, uh, I, you can uh, link to this violence by the number thing, which was- Yeah, I'll link it below. On, it's on a, um, it's on a pro gun website. Yeah. Yeah. So you so, have to keep that in so mind. I, so yeah, you have to keep that in mind. But it's interesting because they ran a video of a guy who said, I don't, I don't want to be biased in any way. So let's just take raw statistics. Let's not, let's take statistics that have been gathered by somebody who doesn't have uh, skin in the game, who doesn't either want to protect their guns or take other people's guns away. Yeah. And so he just took crime statistics from the FBI website. We assume the FBI doesn't have any political agenda, although, Oh, uh, that's it hasn't been <laughs> hasn't been true in in recent years, has it? Yeah. Uh, but uh, I don't know that they're pro gun or anti gun. It doesn't matter. They they put up statistics that they gather from all across the country. Um, the bulk of killings have been in metropolitan areas. They're not in the areas with the so so called deplorables who love their guns. Yeah, uh, they're in the they're in the gang banging inner cities uh, where people like to drive by and use close quarter combat with handguns. Yeah, not with, not with rifles. Um, handguns uh, were used in about one sixth of the violent crimes. Uh, one fourth of the violent crimes were actually perpetrated with what they called personal weapons, which are hands, feet. And fists. So almost a quarter yeah. of them had no gun involved at all. Had had no gun, but were threatening with yeah. their were threatening with their hands or feet. You know, just to be, give somebody a beat down. Yeah. yeah. What percentage, and what percentage were with like knives? Like not not necessarily a, a gun. Very high, about the same percentage as handguns. Yeah. Was knives. Rifles were way down there. Rifles yeah. were way down there. Hardly anybody uses rifles. You know, some of them do. Some of them use shotguns. Uh, but ARs, uh, ARs are good for, if, if you wanted to commit a mass shooting, that would be a good choice of a weapon. Uh, the problem is, who wants to commit a mass shooting? Who? who who wants to do these things? It almost all takes place, like I said, uh, two years, uh, what was, what did the guy say? Did you watch the video? I did not watch the video. Oh, the video was quite good. Uh, the guy I, talked- I'll, I'll link that one too. I mean, it's in the article that you sent, but- It's in that article, yeah. It, it's from 2012, but all the statistics pretty much stay the same. I looked yeah. up the recent, uh, what they called Crime Data Explorer uh, through the FBI. Um, violence has actually gone way down over the years. And the article, in the article, all the charts, I believe all the charts are through 2019. So that's pretty recent data. I I don't know if like, like you know, if the 2020 crime statistics. I don't think are, they've compiled that yeah. and put it together all yet. So it's yeah. pretty, it's like basically as uh, recent as it's going to get in the, uh, in all the charts that are on the, um, the but article I'm going to link. Rate of, the rate of violent crime has still been dropping. It seemed to peak in 1992. It's yeah. been going down pretty steadily since. There's been a couple of, uh, a couple of bumps. Uh, most recently yeah. in 2012, there was a bump. And then again in 2016, which immediately brought 
to my mind, are elections provocative of violent crime? Is there something about the way that news is presented yeah. and the way that, the way that uh, interpersonal relationships within the community and within the country are presented that provoke people to violence? I mean, if you just think about 2016 and 2020, like those are the elections where I was really paying attention to stuff. Like 2012, I was, uh, let me think. I had graduate, I, I was in college, but I was like in my first year of college, I wasn't really like paying attention to the election much, but 2016 and 2020, I was paying attention to both of them. And it's like, yeah, there was a lot of fighting, a lot, like not, e not even like physical fighting or violence, but just like hatred and like, yeah, just, just yeah. absolute vitriol, you know, bitter, like especially bitter, online. Bitter contention. And, yeah. Uh, just disrespectful um, discourse between people. You yeah. Know, not, not even being considerate of uh, the other person's point, not wanting to understand them, listening only to the point where you could pick out something to then either mock them or, you know, use that yeah. as a reason to, to disregard their whole statement. Yeah. So, like generally a good a good rule for any relationship that you want to have but especially in a marriage is like and this is something that my husband and I talk about all the time is like try to interpret what the other person's saying in the best light possible like there are times when you're going to be really angry and so somebody will say something that's it's you know it's not necessarily like a charged statement but you're going to put some meaning on it because you're, you're emotional or whatever. Um, and it's hard to do when you're really mad, but you should always try to interpret what they say in the best light possible because like, uh, ho and hopefully you want your partner or whoever you're doing this with to do the same for you because you're going to say like, you're going to blurt things out and say things in a stupid way that you didn't mean. So. It, it's, it's interesting because you know, the, 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 St. Francis prayer talks about seek first to understand and then be understood. Be understood yeah. Yeah. And, and there's an, that's an interesting correlation with, there was a, there was a book that I read some years ago about conflict resolution and ways to uh, develop win-win scenarios. I think it was called like getting to yes or something mm, like that. Yeah. And it, it was really well written. And one of, in one of the parts they talked about was uh, when there are tensions, whenever there are threats and a sense of insecurity, um, people tend to get fearful. People tend to get defensive and want to protect their interests and, um, uh, you know, sometimes attack the other person mm -hmm. or just be really defensive, uh, be really uh, oblique about stuff, not, you know, kind of get yeah. hard, hard and close off, which yeah. is the worst thing you can do. Yeah. If you're in a, if you're in a relationship where you're supposed to have trust. Yeah. You're, you're supposed to have intimacy into me, you see. Yeah. You, yeah let that person see into you you let that person know where you're coming from what your feelings are about why you're thinking what you're thinking what your goals are what your feelings are and you want to understand their point too so that so in that book it talks about the intent to protect versus the intent to understand yeah uh, and and it, it it takes that leap of saying I want to understand what you're saying and I want to help you understand what I'm saying. And if we put our energies toward that, it's a lot more likely that we're going to be able to uh, actually get to a good yeah. point rather than if I say, oh, you're always like that. That's just, yeah, you're, yeah. Just like, you're just like your mother. I can't believe that you would say that. And it's, you know, <laughs> you're terrible and awful and you just don't, you don't care how I feel. And it's like, Y yikes what how did we get here yeah. <laughs> yeah I mean there's a lot there's a lot of rules that uh, my husband and I have for arguing that prevent stuff like that mostly like another good one is 
never use you statements when you're mad use i statements like when you do this i feel not like you always do whatever um but i was gonna say like you know you know it it might make more obvious sense to talk about these kind of tactics in like a relationship with somebody that you love or whatever but even when you're if, if we're sharing a country don't yeah. we have to trust each other at yeah. some point don't and we I mean, have to take yeah. a chance and be open and say, listen, I don't think you're a bad person. Mm -hmm. I don't want to vilify you. I don't want to, uh, you know, I want to help you understand where I'm coming from. And I want to understand where you're coming from. Yeah. And it, if we have that, we're much more likely to get to a constructive dialogue. Yeah, exactly. Even on a macro level. Yeah. You know, like uh, Jordan Peterson had a debate with Sam Harris. Um, probably, man, it must it must be be like three or four years ago now. Um, but they disagree on a lot, like a lot of stuff. Um, but it was really cool because they had a three day debate, and it was like two hours each time. So it was like six hours of debate, which is a lot. Um, but the second day they did this really cool thing which was they started off and jordan i think jordan suggested like i'm gonna try to put everything sam said yesterday like i'm gonna try to put it in a way that he would agree with that with like how you know his argumentation and then i want him to do the same way that way you know that you're actually listening and hearing the other person like that and it's if the you listener were, it's the listener speaker exercise yeah. from um, what was that book that how to, how to fight for your marriage mm. how to fight for your marriage yeah it's it's the listener speaker exercise perfectly the, the one person's job is to listen and to reflect back what you hear the other person saying yeah so much so that they agree with it like and if they don't agree with it then they need to say like yeah, all that was good, except you missed this point, which I think is really important or whatever, or you misstated this. And then you can be like, okay, now I actually understand where we're both coming from. Now we can like try to move on. And I mean, like, yeah, they disagree about everything, but they were trying to, trying to make a way that they could actually get to like the meat of the issue and talk about things rather than just getting defensive about things. Um, and that's why it was actually like a very interesting debate to watch because you watch a lot of debates and they're really bad. They're just people like insulting you or not, or just like clearly not listening to what you're saying and just trying to make their next point or, you know, just. I call that, I call that the Sachi technique. <laughs> the what? <laughs> the Jen, Jen, Jen Sachi. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Or is she just like, that is an excellent question? I'm not answering it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. She's, she's very charming in the way she says stuff, but she ends up usually saying nothing. Uh, yeah. And that's just trying to trying to kill time and trying to trying to be engaged in a way where she's really not revealing any of the hand. Yeah. Where they I, isn't her thing to say like we'll so, we'll circle back to that or whatever. And, yeah, 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 let's yeah. circle back to that. Um, yeah, that's that's not a good way to solve things. And that yeah, um, so we we went off on a tangent there on personal relationships. Do you want to talk more about violence and stuff? I did think it was interesting that <clears throat> when you look at the stats, it looks like. Most most crime has gone way down since the 90s. The only crime that seems to be increasing is rape, which is sad and interesting. Uh, I do think it's of note they that they, they redefined I'm gonna rape. Say they redefined it. I they don't say like how they redefined it though. Um, I'd like maybe like to look. It says a change in 2013, which does account for the spike. Uh, the criminal definition of rape went uh, underwent a change. Um, so I don't know. I don't know, like how they how they redefined it. It did say though that like you it know, had to do with, like use of a weapon or degree of coercion or something. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, I'm not sure. I don't really care. It's it is it's sad. It is yeah, a sad thing that's gone up. 
Yeah. Um, I think that would go down if more women carried guns. Yeah, and the point I was going to make at the guns are the great equalizer because you look at me. I'm a big guy. I can outpower any woman on this street, ex except for your mother. She's just mean. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> she's like but, a badger. But if they shoot me, that that equalizes the the threat in yeah. a big way. You know? Yeah. A woman with a woman with a pistol can hold off a big guy or several big guys, hopefully. I took a class in college called RAD, which was like rape and aggression defense. It was like a class just for women to teach like how to defend against rape and aggression from Go for the eyes and the testicles. Pretty much. Um and I mean it was it was actually a helpful class, but I do think that the ultimate solution is like carry pepper spray which is what i do or a gun i mean like it, i i don't necessarily want to carry a gun around with me all the time especially because i have little kids with me um so that's why i take pepper spray with me but uh i mean obviously a gun is going to be better than pepper spray um a point i was going to make though when you were saying this before about how you know you said taking guns away from people hasn't really worked to try to like decrease the amount of shootings and stuff that go on. Like, I feel like I was thinking the other day, I was like, every time I read a book, I bring it up on this show, like every time until I read a new book. But I mean, just think about, think about if the Jews were armed during the Holocaust. Like, it's shocking and actually like, incredible meaning like you can't believe it that they killed six million people in europe during you know during the holocaust six million people ver with guns versus like the nazis i mean it i don't know i don't want to say like it would have never happened but i think like it would have been a At lot they harder would have been able to defend themselves yeah i saw i saw an interesting thing the other day a, a couple points here i know we have to wrap up pretty soon but uh well, we're okay. i saw an interesting the other day there was this uh somebody had had written this snarky comment how many ar-15s did jesus, jesus have own. yeah 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 and then the answer to that was not enough to keep him from being murdered by the government who uh, Yeah, yeah, by his own murdered. government. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah, I mean that's that's true. Like that Her that question. is true. Like you it's really it's hard to get completely persecuted and murdered. Like once again, I bring this up all the time, but think about the people in North Korea. Like people in North Korea get killed all the time. It's because they get dragged out into the street and shot because all the police and the people who, you know, run the country, they have the guns and the citizens don't. Like, that's, I guarantee you if they kept statistics, like murder statistics and violent crime statistics in North Korea, it would be way worse than they have here in the U.S. And it's because... Like, what, like, once again, when you were saying about how most of the crimes happen not where, pe where the deplorables who love their guns live, it's because if you know that your neighbor and every neighbor down the street has a gun, you're a lot less likely to go try to rob them with a gun or whatever because you know that you're just going to get shot. Like, my, uh, my husband's relatives who live in Ohio, it's like, no, no one would ever try to come to their door and steal from them, first of all, because you have to drive a quarter of a mile down their highway, down their driveway just to get to their door. But also because everybody there owns multiple guns and is walking around with them all the time. So unless you are extremely confident in your abilities or something, you're, you're not going to like just open fire and attack somebody. Right. It brings up a couple of things. One is, um, Almost all the murders, almost all the mass killings happen in metropolitan areas. Yeah. If you want to, if you want to make metropolitan areas gun-free zones, cordon them off. You know. Yeah. Have have about. You know. I know people don't like borders much anymore. They they want to invite everybody in. But if you don't want people with guns coming in, you better have a gateway that keeps people from 
with guns coming in. Um, that's the people that you need to be watching. Right? Yeah. Um, the other thing was uh, your mom made a very clever point. Kudos. Uh, she said, okay, uh, we have the right to vote. That's a constitutional right. Everybody has the right to vote. We have the right to bear arms. That's a constitutional right. In order to make things fair, we ought to have the, um, the access to voting and the access to guns be exactly the same process. Yeah. Whatever that is. If, if, I, if I can mail in and get a gun and I don't need to show any, uh, show any kind of uh, ID or anything like that, that's fine if that's the way you want to play it. Uh, if you want to have people have to show up and show an ID and uh, verify their identity uh, and, and do so in person, yeah, you probably have to do so in person. Uh, then that ought to be the that ought to be the standard for both voting and for getting guns. Yeah, whatever the and standard, have, you know, and guns, have a the standard for voting, and have a two week week waiting period, and you know, not be able to vote if you have any prior history of depression or mental illness or any of that stuff. Like, I, yeah, right. somebody somebody commented on like a libertarian page today and said, I want like, or they actually were commenting on like CNN or something. CNN posted like, how do we uh, stop these like mass shootings? And like one of the comments was, yeah, make it as, make it as hard to get a gun as it is to vote. And the person under it was like, okay, so mail them to everybody in the country? Like that, it, it is a complete double standard to be like, mm -hmm. voting, voting is a serious thing. Like voting- people, people get their Grundies in a Bundy <laughs> as soon as you start saying things like, oh, maybe we ought to have people, you just hate folks. You yeah. just don't want anybody, you want to suppress votes. Yeah. You want to suppress gun ownership. As a matter of fact, you want to eliminate gun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ownership. It's not uh, even like it's not even suppression. That, that, is, that is a constitutionally mm -hmm. defined right. Yeah. As voting is, voting should be no more suppressed than gun ownership is, and vice versa. Yeah. Um, you know, I. <clears throat> yeah, if, I agree. If they held, if they held that kind of standard. I uh, I think things would change. Yeah. I don't know how they'd change. I think I think probably people would say, uh, you know what, uh, voting is a little bit more uh, sophisticated, and you do have to show a little bit more um, qualification than just having it having an address and having a ballot be mailed to you, or yeah. having. Having somebody come around and say, we want to get your, your vote. If people drove around and handed out guns like that, yeah, uh, would that would that be cool? <laughs> would, I mean, yeah. is that what is is that what you're asking for? Yeah. I, I think they need to be held to the same standard. Yeah. I think they, At the very least, I'd like it to be you know, state or local, locally defined as to, you know, if in California, they want to make it so that, you know, you have to, you can never own a gun, but also like voting is extremely difficult or whatever, then like do, then be consistent. But in, in Texas, like you can show up and vote wh wherever and you can just show up and get a gun. Like, I just want it to be consistent and even if there's diversity across the states, like I want that to happen. If there's if there's different states who want different standards, that's fine. But I yeah, obviously like some more consistency with your rights and your ability to exercise them would be would be nice. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. Um, you know they talk about these red states and blue states, but really what the it it seems what the discrepancy is is uh urban areas yeah and everybody else yeah for sure for sure it's like i've lived in 
I've lived in red states, I've lived in blue states, I've lived in purple states. But every single time, because we've moved around a lot for school, I've almost always lived in a big city with a uni like a university town in a big city. And so almost everywhere that I've ever lived has been liberal, no matter where. I've lived in the north, I've lived in the south, I've lived on the east, I've lived in all different kinds of states. It doesn't matter. Like it, nothing wrong with liberal. It's the leftists that you got to watch out for. Well, yes, it's I, the socialists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Liberal, classical liberal yes. is what they call libertarians. I know, and I, I am a classical liberal, but people don't use the term liberal to mean what it really means anymore. I'm using it in the let's um, reclaim it. Parlance. Let's okay. reclaim it. Like, like Ben Shapiro says, I don't have a problem with liberals. I have a problem with leftists. Well, and I don't either, I have, but yes. I, I, have a problem, I have a problem with fascists, too, you know? All I have uh, a problem with is authoritarians. That's, I mean, if we're going right. to be specific, I just want people to leave me alone, and I want them to leave everyone else alone, too, so. It's yeah. weird, because I was reading about Harpo Marx today. It was like a, a, a click trail <laughs> somehow I, somehow i got on the life of harpo marx and he uh you know he was jewish his whole family was jewish and at one point he went through um it was like in 1933 he went through germany and he could already see some of the stores had marks on them uh whatever jewish stores there were people started to just boycott those stores yeah uh, and he went over to, he, he was a, it was a goodwill ambassador to the Soviet Union from the United States. He went to the Soviet Union and, and they, they spied on him and they uh, like kept him completely under wraps. They, you know, and he, he said, you know, both places were terrible. Obviously Hitler and the fascists yeah. were authoritarian and were, you know, they just did not have respect for human life. Yeah. The same way that the socialists do. Yeah. They just do not have respect for human life. They have some kind of ideological fervor that takes over and instead of being democratic about stuff and, and you know, allowing people to uh, have liberties, they just feel like, oh, people are idiots. We can... We can guide them and mislead them and whatever, convince them. Yeah, they view they view people as Especially pawns. Especially if you take away their guns. Yeah. If you take away their guns, they, they don't have much to fight back with. Yeah. Sticks and stones, and especially bullets, will break our bones, but words, we can manipulate those. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We can spin the hell out of those. Yeah. Um, I can't even remember what I was going to say, but that's okay. Um, well, do we want to say anything else about crime, violence? I mean... No, I just wanted to point out again that, you know, like I said, the uh, government will never waste a crisis. They'll always use it as an opportunity to overreact and to grab more power, and it seems like they're trying to do that. Um, they're trying to get these assault weapon bans and these uh, magazine... Uh, high capacity magazine bans and stuff like that and that has nothing to do with the problems that are going on yeah in this country. and once again like I want to make the point that you can make and they talk about this in the article too like you can make any law you want but criminals don't follow laws like definitionally they don't follow laws so if you take away the guns from the from, you know, all the law-abiding citizens, you're not, you're, you, like, it just is a common sense, I hate that term because, you know, b like, both sides use it to, like, manipulate things once again, but it just makes sense that you're going to have an increase in crime. Like, it, they talk about how uh, when you're analyzing the mass shootings or whatever you want to call it, most of the people who who perpetrate those kind of crimes are people who legally aren't supposed to own guns anyway or uh, uh, illegally obtain their weapon like whatever whatever the case may be but it's like laws don't prevent 
bad things from happening. Laws can't let, you can't legislate the evil of the human heart. Like there are, there are people who just choose to do evil acts. Um, it's like thinking about the whole Vegas shooting, you know, like the guy who was just, it's like, it's so hard to prevent something like that when he's just opening fire on this massive crowd from like a bill, you know, a building far away and all this stuff. It's like, you, it's so hard to prevent that. But like the re the reason for it is not because he got his hands on a gun. The reason for it is because he had an evil intent in his heart. He, he had mental illness and I don't know. This is, this is like the thing that. And if, and if you want to have a deterrent, the number one deterrent is more more good armed people around. Yeah, of course. These guys never go and attack. They never attack an army post yeah. or a police or, or a, a gun police, show or, or a yeah. police or a police station or some place where they know that there's going to be return fire. Mm -hmm. They're cowards. Yeah. Most of them. Are, most of them are suicidal yeah. and are, you know too cowardly to swallow their own bullet. Yeah. So they want to shoot everybody else. Uh, you know, they, they've lost a regard for life, yeah. their life and everybody else's. Uh, and so, you know, if you really want to make it a deterrent, have every, every crime that is committed uh, with a, a weapon uh, be severely punished. You know, uh, you know, just make those make those punishments much more severe. Back in the old west, you know what they would have done? There, I heard the other day that this Boulder guy, he probably won't come to trial until next year. You know what would have happened in the old west? Somebody would have just taken. He'd already be dead. Yeah, yeah. He clearly did it. He was seen in the act. Yeah. Thousands of witnesses. You don't need a trial. You yeah. just need an execution. And I mean, like, I do believe what is going on. I do I, believe And I don't care that he's mentally ill. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I do care. It's sad that he's mentally ill. But uh, somebody who's willing to, to go to that extent, um, I'm thinking, you know, they've probably, they've probably made themselves incapable of living in society forever yeah, yeah. And, and, like, if the I, and if the government wants to to execute them great if the government wants to house them why yeah <laughs> i'm still i i'm i i don't like the death penalty but like i certainly think that and i am i am very pro like fair trial but like our our judicial system in this country is very backlogged and people get people have to wait forever to have trials and stuff like in a case like this his trial should not be a, next year his trial should be next week like it's not that it's not that just, hard unfortunately you know justice a lot of times seems to be bought and sold uh to the to the highest bidder just like uh, just like politics yeah you know person who can make the strongest case whether it's true or not uh tends to tends to walk yeah and if, the glove, if, if the glove don't fit you must acquit <laughs> oh I'm yeah not saying oj killed anybody i'm just saying but if, if he did it bad, if he did yeah um well should we yeah wrap up yeah, let's talk real quick about um, the trade one. Yeah, should we talk real quick about it? I mean, about Easter and like Easter, Easter Monday, all that stuff, since that's when this is coming out, and Divine Mercy Sunday. Um, I mean, once again, I wish Jesus would have been armed. Peter tried to. Peter tried to. Uh, uh, tried Jesus to, said, "No, don't do it. It's not yeah. about." It's not about force of arms. It's about force of love. It's about force of will, and and love conquers all. Yeah. A more Vincent Omnia. <laughs> we we have these like little 
my kids are obsessed with window clings. You know what window clings are? Like little decorations yeah. that stick to the window. Um, my little one heard me say it and she's like getting really excited. Because every, yeah. every night we read a little story from like the life of Jesus and then we put a window cling on the window. But one of them just says, love wins. They're all like Easter themed. One of them mm -hmm. says, love wins, which I think is like the, just the worst, like it, that phrase has been co-opted to mean like, feelings win is what it has been co-opted to mean oh but i do i do think love i mean like that's that is the message of love in the context of god is love yeah yeah, yeah. like love in the context of easter it, it does yeah. win love like jesus is the king over death like he has come to he has come to to show us that we don't have to be stuck in the grave we don't have to live this same life of sin like we can rise again to a new life and that is that's the great message of easter so anyway it's yeah. probably too late and, for that, me. And, that's, and that's also the basis for the mercy that we show to people especially people that when we you know we consider them to have mental illness we don't consider them to necessarily be completely responsible for their behavior um yeah you, but, it, but if you don't hold people responsible for their behavior they can't fix it if you don't yeah. say hey, hey you did that what do you that's that's not cool what are you how are you gonna what are you gonna do differently if we just say oh well people make mistakes that's why they put rubber on the other end of the pencil <laughs> <laughs> Well, and it's like, it, you know, the, a book you gave me when my oldest was really young, which I still think is an amazing parenting book, is Love and Logic. Like, the whole idea of the Love and Logic, like, philosophy, it's not actually just about parenting, it's, it's about just any sort of, like, interpersonal relationship, but it's especially good in the context of a parenting relationship is like you let people make choices but they have to suffer the logical consequences of those choices like when it's the contractual basis of liberty yeah yeah exactly exactly and that's why it's so great is because it's not arbitrary you're not you're not like assigning random consequences you're making them suffer natural consequences for their behavior but it also perfectly prepares you for the real world because in the real world you have to suffer i mean unless you're being bailed out by the government or something you it might happen <laughs> which does happen all the time like yeah my uh i had a conversation this week about like ford making anyway it was it was about like how big big businesses get bailed out by the government and then they don't have to suffer the consequences of their action and that's when capitalism becomes crony capitalism i guess you want to say or you know corporatism whatever um manipulated market so yeah anyway um i i was talking about jesus and then i got onto ford and capitalism but um i yeah enjoy enjoy uh this easter week enjoy uh apparently in it's a tradition that on Easter Monday, when this is coming out, that's the day that Jesus like walked with the disciples on the road to Emmaus. So go for a walk today. They call it an Emmaus walk. I think in Europe, they call it an Emmaus walk where people go on walks and have picnics and stuff on Easter Monday. And then um, get your butt into confession and receive communion and enjoy the benefits of Divine Mercy Sunday because Mm -hmm. it's a that's a big one it's a good it's a beautiful talk about gift presidential part all responsibility for sin is washed away exactly exactly it's your it's your absolution i mean you, <laughs> you do have to my get out of jail it's my get out of purgatory free card i don't think it quite works that way but um not quite. that's funny because i was reading a, an article or like a website about the scapulars you know like brown scapulars and stuff and a lot of people believe like if you die when you're wearing the scapular you'll like go straight to heaven or you'll not spend very much time in purgatory i don't really know how it works um because i've i haven't done that since i was a little kid but um 
they said right on there, like, this is not a get out of hell free card or whatever. Like, right. I, yeah, I mean, that, it doesn't really work that way. Once again, like, it, it your intentions. It's supposed matter. to be a reflection of the inner self. Exactly. Not, not some sort of bullet, uh, bulletproof vest. Yeah, 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 for sure. So, I don't know. Do we have anything else we want to say? It's too late for me to get philosophical and interesting. All right, good. You go uh, hug your babies and go to sleep, and we'll uh, we'll catch up with you uh, probably next week. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna. Yeah, you're gonna. We're gonna be together next week. Oh, we'll have to do one right there. I'll be sitting right next to you. I hope. Yeah, I hope we can make the time to do it. I think that we should be able to at some point. Yeah. Yeah, we might make the time to do three or four. Who knows? Um, but yeah, uh, everybody have a good have a good um, Easter week and Divine Mercy Sunday, and we will talk to you guys soon. Enjoy. Bye, everyone. Bye.